Uh, other things that help are external cues, and we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to talk about all these cues. So, first one is attention. It's just conscious movement. Um, if people have a hard time crossing thresholds or initiating movement, just attention to what they're doing. Some people will just, uh, if they're stuck, they'll pretend that they're going to step over an imaginary line. They'll pretend of an imaginary line. They'll step over it. That's what they call an attention cue. Uh, there's auditory cues that, that use rhythm. These these could be as simply as you know humming. Counting, you know, in a rhythmic pattern, um, you know, uh, uh, talking to yourself, you know, okay, left leg, right arm, you know, um, those are all different auditory cues. Uh, visual cues are, are markers. Um, uh, again, st stepping over lines, kind of a visual cue. Um, I, I, I'll, I we'll talk about some of the things here in a second. Uh, one visual cue what I'll do, and, and we'll talk about elevators, is um, elevators are tough. For, especially with progressed Parkinson's, they're really tough. And, and again, we talked about how um, you know it, it's a threshold you got to cross, uh, as well as a time factor. And so, what what visual cue works well for the elevator is uh, is to look past the threshold and look at the destination that you want to go to in the elevator. And so, uh, uh, and so that's using kind of a visual cue. And, and a lot of times that that works because you're 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 not even focused on the thres that threshold. You're 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 looking past that threshold. You're focused on the place you want to be in that elevator. And a lot of times that'll decrease the, the, the freezing. Uh, tactile cues, you know, or uh, you're going to have your um, friend or partner tap you. Uh, you, can, you can try to cue yourself if, if you're having trouble with just one side. And I'll, I'm going to give some examples of those here in a minute. So the visual cue, um, so you know, imaginary line. Tape. Some people actually use tape uh, on their thresholds. <laughs> um, I'll go to their house and they, they'll do what we did in the clinic and they'll put tape. I have tape all over the clinic uh, in certain spots just so we can practice these things. And some people will put tape on, on their thresholds and then just so they can kind of practice just stepping over them within their home. Um, laser lights. Uh, we'll talk about that when we talk about uh, some of the equipment that's out. Um, and we kind of addressed all this. Now these, uh, these things, pictures at the bottom are, are different types of cues. Uh, one trick that somebody taught me, uh, uh, a Parkinson's a patient I work with, had a little yellow ribbon he tied on the end of his cane. He would put the cane in the threshold, focus on the ribbon, step towards the ribbon. Worked, worked great for him. Um, this is a, 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 uh, in the walker. It's just a TheraBand that we have in the clinic. Um, we use that, people just step, if they're having a hard time taking big steps, then they use that as a visual cue, a step towards the, the TheraBand. And then this one, and we'll talk about the equipment, this is kind of uh, interesting. It, it is a uh, cane that creates an obstacle and forces you to step over it. And, and we'll talk, we'll, I'll show you a picture of that here in a little bit, more, more on that. So um, anti-freezing strategies, kind of a review. Uh, what I teach people is when freezing occurs, just to stop. When, what happens a lot of times, uh, people try to work past the freezing, and uh, uh, that's when they fall. So if you, if you get frozen, you just you got to stop and use your strategies. That's when you need to pull out you know, the tricks you know, that, that, you, that you learned and are effective, and, uh, um, and try not to work through them. Again, when you're trying to, uh, you get frozen, you're trying to move out of the frozen, you're still relying on that faulty faulty automatic pilot. And so you want to stop, use your strategies that, that, that uh, use the other part that works. So uh, you always want to restart, uh, visualizing, we talked about doorways. And, and you, basically you want to see uh, what works for you. And you basically need to develop your own personal trick and have that to pull out when you get in trouble. And I, I was teaching a, a support group once in um, this guy had Parkinson's for 15 years, and he raised his hand and says, well, I, I have trouble uh, uh, pretty much consistently in this one situation. And he began to explain that he had a den in his house, and he would go to the den, there was a computer, and he would email his grandkids, and then he would pull himself up. There was a bookshelf above that was bolted to the wall. He would use it to pull himself up, and then he would be stuck. He just, he literally couldn't move. And I guess the den was in an isolated part of the house. And, and one thing we didn't talk about, but with Parkinson's, um, a lot of times your, your speech, um, you lose volume. And so, you know, he's thinking he's yelling as loud as he can, but, you know, it's not coming out that way. And so 
he, he was calling for help and was basically stuck there, and, and he described it that you know, he'd be stuck 20 minutes, 30 minutes sometimes, and, and it, was a, it was a problem because he didn't want to give up the ability to go email his grandkids and all that kind of stuff. So, so I brought him up and I said, okay, you need a trick. Let's figure out what your trick is. And uh, so we, simu- we went to a wall, we kind of simulated his, his situation, and I put him in that posture, and he, and he was stuck uh, in, in the posture. And so his trick was as simply as, okay, uh, your problem now is your center of gravity is in front of your base of support, so you you, you, you got to take care of that first. And so he just simply squeezed his Ocoli and, and pinched his shoulder blades, got his center of gravity, you know, got, got himself aligned. Now, now he can do the poor man's hula, and then he was able to get out of it. And when we did it at that meeting, he was able to get out of that in 10 seconds. And uh, I still get Christmas cards from him because he, he, doesn't, he doesn't get stuck there anymore. So you, you got to figure out what works for you. And, and you know, it, it's hard when you're trying to learn these things because it's not natural to think about moving. And, and so it is hard. And you have, to, you have to train yourself. And you have to have that trick. And you're, you are going to make mistakes. And you are going to get stuck. But when you do, you can, you can restart and keep on going, you know, just like uh, my friend Doug, so. But anyway, so you, you have to develop a personal trick. We're gonna talk about walking strategies now. You know, these are tricks just uh, pure for walking. Um, one thing that really works well is uh, I call the four-point gait. And when we walk, I guess I'll hold on to this still. Um, before you had Parkinson's, you didn't think about it, you would walk. Your arms would swing. And, and you wouldn't think about it. And there's a reason why your arms swing. The, when your arms swing, it's opposite arm with your opposite leg. What that does is it causes rotation at your pelvis, and, it, and it's a very efficient way to walk. That's how we're designed. Otherwise, you know, you, you get more of this lateral movement, and there's more impact on your joints and whatnot. And so this is a natural thing. So what I try to do as much as possible I try to restore the natural walking pattern because, you know, it works pretty good. And, and, uh, um, and so we use the four-point gait, and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate it. Can, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, okay. So the four-point gait, it's, it's really simple. And the four points are your, your two arms and your two legs. And so when, we're, when I'm first teaching this, I, I teach, uh, I basically you can go arm, Opposite leg, arm, opposite leg, arm, opposite leg, arm, opposite leg, and basically that's the normal walking pattern. Now it looks easy, but it's not. When you're first starting, it is not, because you're not used to thinking about arms, so you're not used to thinking, and it's really easy to um, get the sequence all messed up and get frustrated, and all my patients get frustrated, and, but they get it, you know. And it really, really makes a makes a makes a big difference. And so, uh, so a couple things are happening when you do this. Okay, first of all, uh, with I, in the clinic, I basically use um, broomsticks with tips I put on the bottom, um, and uh, but they're tall. Okay, so first of all, what, what, what this helps you out with it helps you with your posture because it has a tendency to basically keep your you know your center of gravity over your feet. And, and keep a tall posture because these are nice and tall. The second thing is because you are manipulating these, these sticks, you're thinking about it, right? So now you turned off that automatic pilot, you're using the, the front part, okay? You're using your motor cortex, you're thinking about it. So now it's purposeful. And then the third part benefit of this, it mimics the, the normal walking pattern. So it is a great, this is a great strategy if you're having trouble with your, your gait. And this could be with, uh, if you're, if you're you know, having trouble where you're leading gait like this, if you're shuffling, um, it's a good thing to, to, to try to start with. It, it, it's probably, of the four ones I'm gonna show you, this is the hardest one. Uh, but a lot of people get benefit uh, out of it. And we'll talk about uh, these here in a little bit when we talk about uh, assistive devices.